India must be a permanent member of the UN Security Council and India is that strong shoulder from, for the Global South that if the Global South has to make that high jump, India is that shoulder to propel it ahead. This is the interview of Prime Minister Narendra Modi to a prominent French newspaper today as he left for his two-day trip to France. A long interview with the Prime Minister has touched on some very, very important points. But the strongest pitch by the Prime Minister is asking that why is India not a permanent member of the UN Security Council? To quote the PM, how can the UN Security Council claim to speak for the world when its most populous country and its largest democracy is not a permanent member? PM Modi has in fact said that President Emmanuel Macron holds his and shares his view on the international order. The question that was asked for him by the newspaper was that in PM has been advocating for India's permanent membership to the UN Security Council and is it the credibility of the UN which is at stake in this perspective? Prime Minister Modi has told the newspaper that the issue is not just of credibility but something much, much larger. PM said, I believe that the world needs to have have an honest discussion about the multilateral governance structures that were built in the aftermath of the Second World War. And nearly eight decades after these institutions were created, the world has transformed. The number of member countries has grown by four times. The character of the global economy has changed, the PM said. The PM said that we live in an era of new technology. New powers have risen, causing a relative shift in the global balance. And there are new challenges that are being faced, including cybersecurity and terrorism. PM Modi said that in this changed world, many questions arise. Are these representative of today's world? Are these organizations able to discharge the roles for which they were set up? And do countries around the world feel that these organizations matter or are even relevant? The UN Security Council, he said in particular, epitomizes this dissonance because it's, the PM said that how can we talk of a primary organization of a global body when the entire continents of Africa and Latin America are being ignored? How can it claim to speak for the world when its most populous country and its largest democracy, which is India, is not a permanent member? The PM also said that the skewed membership leads to opaque decision-making processes which adds to its helplessness in addressing the challenges of the contemporary world. The PM Modi has also said that he thinks that most countries are clear on what changes they would like to see in the UN Security Council including on the issue that we need to listen to the voice of these countries, need to listen to their advice, and he said that he appreciates the clear and consistent position that France has taken on the matter. The PM also spoke on the India's role as a bridge between the global south and the western world. To quote the PM, he said that the rights of the global south have been long denied, and as a result, there is a feeling of anguish amongst these countries. The PM said that India, now the most populous country in the world, needs to regain its rightful place. Modi said that he sees a renewed confidence in India's people, an optimism about the future and an eagerness to take its rightful place in the world. He also spoke about how India is turning into a developed economy by 2047. PM Modi proudly said that India is now the world's fifth largest economy as in, as, and is on the track to become the third largest economy very soon. Modi also touched upon India's soft power, pointing out how the global reach of countries' cinema, music, the renewed interest for Ayurveda, and as a practitioner himself, the universal success of yoga has transformed the world. PM said that India is a rich civilization that is thousands of years old. Today, India is also one of the most youthful nations in the world, and its strongest asset, in fact, is its youth. He said at, time, at a time when many countries in the world are in fact aging and the populations are shrinking, India's young and skilled force is an asset for the world over the decades to come. He said the progress of the one-sixth of the humanity of the will give the world a more prosperous and sustainable future. He also said very categorically that there is a global recognition now that India is a force of good in the world and indispensable for global unity, cohesion, peace and prosperity at the times of great turmoil and risk of fragmentation in the world. He said that as India grows, our contribution towards global good will increase, our capabilities will continue to be directed towards the larger good of humanity and also not to, we don't raise claims against others or challenge the international order. He in fact, very importantly, the Prime Minister in this interview has said that India is a consistent voice for the cause of a peaceful, fair and just world. 
and India's commitment to international law and peace are the reasons that India's rise is welcomed, not feared in the world. And he said these are also the pillars of Indian soft power. PM was asked about his relationship with the US and with which the PM said that he has personally enjoyed an excellent rapport with the US leadership across different administrations over the last nine years. He mentioned his recent state visit to the US uh, in June where President Joe Biden and he had agreed that the partnership between the world's two largest democracies with exceptionally strong to strong people should be the defining partnership of this century. He also said that the partnership is perfectly placed in terms of interests, visions, commitments, and he also said that this will shape the new world order. The PM also spoke about the collective strength and the collective leadership of the entire global south so that its voice becomes more strong and the whole community can take leadership from itself. He said he doesn't think India should take any position in this, but he said that for India, the powers of the global south have long been denied their rightful pl place in the world order. As a result, he said that the feeling of anguish amongst the members of the global south and also that they don't find a place or a voice for themselves. He said the true spirit of democracy has not been respected vis-a-vis -vis the global south and he feels that if we, if we would have worked in the true spirit of democracy and given the same rights and the same respect to people of the global south, the world would have been a more powerful and a stronger community. The PM was also spoke on many other major issues. He said, when asked how India sees itself in the global south, he said India being that strong shoulder of the global south, that if the global south has to make that high jump, India can be that shoulder to propel it ahead. For the global south, he said, India can also build its linkages with the global north. So in a sense, that shoulder can become a bridge of sorts. He said, what we need to do is strengthen that shoulder, that bridge, so that the linkages between the, between the North and the South can become stronger and the Global South itself becomes much stronger. The PM also said that he has proposed to give the African Union permanent membership in the G20. In speaking for the Global South, he has said we are not seeking any position ourselves or any adversarial relationship with the North so as to speak. But in fact, he said the vision, the, he wants to advance the vision of one world, one future. About the vision for India for 2047, the PM has said that we want to see India become a developed country in 2047. He said the developed economy that caters to the needs of its people on the various fronts of education, health, infra, and India remains a vibrant and a participative federal democracy in which all citizens are secure about their rights, confident of their place in the nation, and optimistic about their future. He said that India will remain a global leader in innovation and technology and also said our economy will be a hub of opportunities and engine of global growth. He said India will be a strong testimony to the power of democracy in the days and years to come. He was also asked that whether he looks what is better, East or the West. He said, I don't look in terms of whether the East or West is better, but whether one thought process is better. The PM weighed in, in fact, on the Vedas written thousands of years ago in India on how all the, all the noble thoughts should come in from all sides. He also said that our economic development has been guided by people to people-centric approach. We have tried to implement decisions that they take along among some of the most disadvantaged and on last mile connectivity. Harnessing digital technology for this last mile connectivity is something that the PM also has weighed on. He, he has specified, in fact, how India has built 40 million homes for the poor, 110 million toilets for proper sanitation, how 500 million people got new bank accounts, 400 million people have been given microcredit loans, cooking gas connection given to 90 million households, and 500 million people getting free health insurance coverage. All this, he said, also continued during COVID and today 46% of real-time digital payments globally happen in India. He said India is now the world's third largest startup ecosystem. India is also the world's fifth largest economy on track to become the third largest economy in the years to come. We are committed to build India into a developed economy by 2047 is what the PM said. He was also asked that is China threatening the security in the region? The PM was clear that India has always stood for peaceful resolution of differences through dialogue and diplomacy and for respecting sovereignty of all nations. On the Ukraine war and on the India's stand on Ukraine, the PM was clear that he has spoken a number of times to President Putin and President Zelensky and also met President Zelensky in Hiroshima and recently spoke to President Putin again. He said India's stand has been clear, transparent and consistent that this is not an era of war. Both sides should resolve their issues through dialogue and India is 
ready to support all such genuine efforts that can help bring the conflict to an end. He said, we believe that all countries have an obligation to respect sovereignty of either country, territorial integrity, and to abide by the international law. Countries already suffering from the impact of COVID pandemic of the global south also are affected by the war, and that is what the PM has cited to say that the conflict must end. He has also said that since about the France relationship, he has said that since coming to power in 2014, he has played special emphasis on India's strategic partnership with France, on how India's trade with France has doubled since 2014. And just this year, two Indian air carriers have placed an order for more than 750 aircraft of Airbus with France. This PM's interview has many news headlines, and the strongest point being how PM Modi is strongly pitching for India's place as a permanent member of the UN Security Council.